let's now focus on the graphing of the inverse of a function. So I alluded to this in the previous questions a little bit, which is that the graphs of the inverse of a function is always symmetrical to this line here, y equals to x. So whenever you want to graph the inverse of a function, best thing to do is to draw in a dotted line of y equals to x and know that the function, the inverse function, will be reflected in this line. So this white one here is our original function. And can you see how that's flipped over to become this yellow graph to be our inverse? Now, if it confuses you how that flips over to that, what you can do is just split the graph into the top half and the bottom half. So before it crosses the dotted line and after. So let's consider the top half first. So I'm just thinking about this portion here. Can you see how that's going to be reflected into your yellow line there? Yeah? Whereas if I'm just thinking about your bottom half there, can you see how that's just reflected into that yellow part there? And now wherever the original function crosses a y equals to x line, this is where the inverse function will also cross. Okay? So they always cross at the same point there. Now the other thing about drawing your inverse of a function is that your x-intercept for the original function will become your y-intercept there. So for example, this point here is approximately 1.90, which means that this y-intercept here is going to be the point 0, 1.9. Because you think back to the very first module of this inverse function, it said that when we find the inverse of a function, the set of values flip over. So the 1.90 becomes a 0, 1.9. So the most important thing I want you to remember is that it's reflected in the y equals to x line. And if you get confused, just think about it as half and half. And then wherever the original function crosses the y equals to x line, that's where the inverse function will also cross that line. Okay, let's work through some examples now and I think you'll become more familiar with it as you practice. So here we've been given the parabola and we want to sketch the graph of the inverse of this function. So it's already been drawn, the y equals to x line has already been drawn as a dotted line, okay? So if it's reflected in this line, can you see how it's almost going to twist over this way? So the inverse will look like this. Now, if you're having trouble imagining this, what I wanted you to do is only imagine this part here. So only this part, which is underneath the dotted line, okay? Now this part, can you see how if I flip it, right? That's going to flip over to this portion. Can you see how that's flipped there? Yeah? And then you can consider the part of the curve which is above the dotted line, which is this, which flips over to here, and that, which flips over to here. So if you think about that, if you know this flips over to here, and this portion will flip over to here, you can almost draw in the rest of it. So it's a good, it gives you a good concept about whereabouts it's going to be. And now this, this y-intercept here, so if it was 0, 2, would indicate that the x-intercept here, sorry, 0, negative 2, this will be negative 2, 0. Because the x and the y values flip over to be that value over there. Great. So this just shows you how all you need to do is just flip it in the y equals to x line. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly different graph here. So we have the curve here and we want to sketch a graph of the inverse. So we just want to mirror it in this curve. I think this one's quite easy to imagine that this part here will need to be flipped over here. So the rest of it is going to be extending across there, like that, okay? And this point here is going to be mirrored in that point there. Now you can see that wherever 
the original curve is crossing the y-axis, that's also where the inverse function is also crossing. Can you see that? Here and here. And that also gives you a good indication. So there's a couple of checkpoints you can do to make sure you've dra drawn the right inverse curve. You can check that it does cross at the points that the original curve does cross on the y equals to x, and you can check a little portion. So check this portion. Is that flipped over correctly? Yeah, it is. So you know you're on the right track there. All right, what about question 22 here? I want you to try sketch a graph of this inverse by yourself first, okay? So it's a little bit difficult, but let's see if you can get that. So I'll give you a second to try and figure this one out. All right, how are you going there? Okay, so how many of you got this as the inverse? It's hard to imagine, isn't it, why that flips over to that? I mean, I actually found it very difficult to imagine that initially. So what I want you to do is let's just think about the left portion of the original curve first. So if we're just thinking about this half on that side, right? Can you see how if that is flipped in the y equals to x line, that's going to be this portion there, yeah? Similarly, if I'm just thinking about this portion there and I want to flip it in this, that's going to become that there. So that's why it looks like that altogether. And the other good point to note is it's going to cross at the same points on y equals to x and this point here is going to correspond to that point there. So if we say this point is approximately 1.60, then this point here is going to be 0, 1.6, and so on. So this point here corresponds to that point there. Can you see that? So if you do get confused, I just want you to separate the graph into either above the dotted line or below or on the left and right hand side and then flip that and then you can check your values and also where it crosses y equals to x. Okay, well what about question 23? So we have this curve here and I want you to sketch a graph of the inverse. So just give you a second to think about what that might look like. And if you're getting confused, I just want you to consider a portion of the graph. Okay, I'll give you a little hint. I just want you to consider that portion there. What's that gonna look like if I re make it flipped in this line there? Yeah, that's just gonna be that there, isn't it? If I'm only considering that, I can see that it's only gonna be that portion. But if I know that portion of the curve looks like that, it makes sense the rest of the curve is gonna follow in that direction. Yeah, can you see how it's difficult to just imagine it straight away? if we just consider one portion, it's a lot easier, isn't it? And also we can consider what these points represent. So this point here represents this point over here when it's flipped, right? So if this point is about negative 1.20, this will be around 0, negative 1.2. And similarly, this point here represents that point there. Yeah? And so you can check your points. And what that's really useful for is if you're considering only x is greater than 0, so this portion of the curve, it's very important to know what portion of your inverse curve corresponds to that. Does that make sense? So not only do we need to know how to sketch an inverse, we also know which half of the curve corresponds to the original half of the curve.